And hello once again. It's your 743rd favorite podcaster, Velvet Al, with the ever thankless job of watching movies so you don't have to. Last time I watched the Thor movie, and so this week I'm going to do another Thor movie. Just because. I don't know, we're on the subject. Uh, this is a 1963 film, Thor and the Ama- uh, not the Amazing, Thor and the Amazon Women. Which sounds like the title of like one of the Hercules movies they did back in like the 60s. Like those Italian films, like Hercules and the Amazon Women. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was just one of those Hercules movies and they overdubbed Thor's name because for reasons why to cap <laughs> to capitalize on the Thor mania that is recent. I don't know, when is Hercules going to make his appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Because he is there in the Marvel comics, because they're like, ah, fuck it, we stole one mythological god, let's steal some more. Um, But the description on this is fucking great, so I have to watch it. Queen Nera has imprisoned all the men in her kingdom, as well as the women who disagree with her methods. Thor sets out to rescue the, these women and a princess who wants to restore the crown to her brother and women to her traditional role. Feminist manifesto? This is not. Um, this is going to... It's obviously... <clears throat> this is from the 60s, so it's just going to be so chock full of good old-fashioned sexism which makes for fantastic viewing all the time. Um, although this is, this is probably like going to be like the fucking Republicans, like greatest fantasy. Like, yes, we want to restore women to traditional role. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. 1963, like how far are we in the feminist movement that year? Like, has it really, like, started taking full effect? Um, I don't know. All I know is that this film is going to be fantastically bad. Okay, so this is an Italian film. It's from Studio Italia or something. It's at Italy on the, in the credits, so... <laughs> um, I don't know if this film is being played at the wrong speed, or if because it's overdubbed it's got like that speed racer effect where they have to like cram a lot of dialogue into a very short period of time because this narrator is just going off like 50 miles per hour and the gist of what's going on is we're in this society where men are enslaved and women are bloodthirsty and sometimes even force other women to fight to the death gladiator style I, for one, want to join the society. Yeah, I'll be a slave, okay? But that's just how it goes sometimes. It just seems a cooler society than we're in right now. We're in a dumpster fire, so would this really be any worse? We get a total card saying that the producers wish to express their gratitude to the Yugoslavia authorities for granting permission to shoot some scenes in the grottos of Postumia. That means absolutely fuck all to me, but some of you out there, uh, fans of Italian history or whatever, who knows what any of that means, just, I guess, um, keep that in mind, that that is going to add to your enjoyment of the film. I don't know. I don't know why I even brought it up, but looks like they're going off to war or something and the men are human shields for the women archers and they're just walking forward every once in a while the men's men duck down while the women archers shoot their arrows up in the air and went, wash rinse repeat i don't know seems like a good military strategy you got your human shields and your archers it just seems kind of bizarre like because it's a row of human shields Row of archers, row of human shields. Um, so in that case, I would want to be in the very, very final row of archers, because, or even like the second final row, which would be the human shields. 
Because by that point, a lot of human shields and a lot of archers have been killed by the time they get to you. So that's the spot I want. I want to be that last line of human shields. Now, what I'm assuming is the queen, because she's got kind of the Egyptian queen garb type thing going on, uh, is in a cave with some of her trusted women, right-hand women or something, or whatever you want to call, like, the people that are really close to the queen. And I think this is a goddess that appears. She's wearing, like, an awful white wig and is painted with some awful yellow paint. And when she speaks, there's, like, just fucking horrible echo and reverb on it. Because, you know, that's the way gods speak with very, <laughs> just very echoey. Or maybe just because they're in a cave. <laughs> it could just be very echoey. I can't understand a fucking thing she says because of all that echo. Um, something about there's some really strong guy that they're going to have to face or lose the kingdom. Something like that. Um, so really, this could still be like a Hercules film that they decided to turn into Thor. And yeah, the title credit did say Thor. But, you know, that might have just been for the American audiences. They're like, American audiences are fucking sick of Hercules films. Let's make them Thor. I don't know. I guess we'll see once the fight comes. Does Thor have his hammer? Or is it just some random strongman who happens to also be named Thor and isn't actually the Norse god? I don't know. But the queen says to her minions, like, whoever brings to her the strongman will have a thousand male slaves. Which, how can you, like, give up that? <laughs> how can you resist and pass up a chance for a thousand male slaves? That is a good deal. I mean, the terrorists, they only got 73 virgins. They're getting a thousand males, like, male slaves. So, obviously, some will be for sex slaves. Some will be labor slaves. Some are for painting. Some, you know, do some light yard work. Some will cook for you. There are so many options you can do with a thousand male slaves. It's just, again, I will fucking bring this tough man and dress myself up as a woman to get these thousand male slaves. And man, I cannot wait till this film gets out of the cave scenes. Okay, so it is the cave thing, because everyone speaks with that fucking echo. Just so annoying as fuck. And it's like, why? Were you trying for realism with the cave? Like, yeah, we get it. It's a cave. You don't have to put echo. On top of that, you this is fucking dubbed from the original, so it's not even like they have the original sound. So it wasn't like they shot on location and the cave just was echoey. They put echo into the sound, and I don't know why. Horrible, horrible movie choice. <laughs> horrible filmmaking choice. But then again, I'm going to guess there's a lot of horrible filmmaking choices going on here today. Um, so some of the women, they're telling stories of this like strong man who was in a cage, and he fought a guy in a gorilla suit. Um... But it was supposed to be a gorilla. We're going to pretend it's a gorilla. But clearly it's a guy in a gorilla suit. And he kills the guy with... Kills the gorilla with just his bare strength. And another time, he was fighting lions, but they were so scared of his strength, they didn't try to fight. They just decided to play with him and be all cuddly. Which I don't know if that's necessarily, like, his strength. Or maybe he just has a really, like, good personality. Like, he's very good with cats. And the lions are like, oh man, this guy, he's not fighting us. He's hes giving me some scritches behind the ear. Like, oh, you know, cats. And he just knew enough to stop petting and stop scratching behind the ears at the point before the lion decides, I'm fucking biting you because I'm a big cat and we only tolerate pets for so long and then we bite you. But uh, he's dressed like Hercules, so I'm still 
believing that this is just a fucking Hercules film and they had to change the name to Thor. Because maybe this wasn't like an officially official Hercules movie. So the makers of the Hercules films threatened to sue, even though you can't really because Hercules is like a public domain character being part of mythology. So I don't know. Or maybe they just, you know, it was concurrent. Like they were making it and then suddenly this other company came out with their Hercules film and they're like, oh, fuck, we don't want to have to compete with that. Um, Let's go with some other god, uh, Thor. And no, he's not even the Norse god, Thor. Um, his name is, according to the one woman talking, is named from, derived from Taurus, who was his father or something. I don't know. It's fucking echoey as fuck. So I don't understand what half of what these women are saying. But Thor is his name, and Anger is his middle name. Um, that's a callback to the last episode, if you remember. John McHale Thor. Anger is his middle name. So he's not the Norse god Thor. He's just some really fucking strong guy that looks like Hercules and has the name Thor. Now we get some shots of an idyllic village where the children are happy. The women are happy. And most importantly, the men are happy. Oh, no Amazons here. Because women know their rightful place. It's all about the men, baby. And this one young kid, um, he seems like young teens, like 13 or 14. He's found track that there's a tiger around, and he's going to hunt this tiger down and kill him. But, you know, he's only a 13-year-old, so he needs some protection. So his older sister's going to go along with him and completely emasculate him, you know? Because, oh, you need your big sister's help, uh, do you? And... She looks kind of badass herself. She's Actually, she seems like she could be an Amazon, except for her being blonde. And it seems like all the other Amazons have dark hair. Because, you know, blonde women are dumb and subservient. So this whole like stereotype of blonde women, I guess, even infected Italy in the 1960s. And beyond. Where am I going? Yeah, actually, she's kind of hot. She's hot in an Amazonian type of way. So I'm guessing this is, like, the woman who, in the description, doesn't agree with the Amazon's way of life. Because, like, she's a fucking model. She is tall. She's tall and has blonde hair. She's absolutely gorgeous. And, I don't know, is she going to kick some ass? You know, as I'm thinking about this, Thor is a public domain character. Which means if DC Comics really wanted to, they could do a Wonder Woman versus Thor comic. And I don't know why they don't. They should go for it. I don't know. Like, could they get sued for... If DC were to, like, have a Thor storyline? Like... I don't know. I mean... Maybe they couldn't, like, really advertise it on the covers, because then, like, you know, Marvel could have a case that they're trying to trick people into thinking that it's Thor from Marvel Comics. But as long as they don't have any of the signifying elements that Marvel Comics added, they could totally have Thor versus Wonder Woman. I kind of want that. I would like this film... To be Thor versus Wonder Woman. I'm going to pretend this is Thor versus Wonder Woman. Because it's going to be Thor. That's not really the Norse god Thor. Fighting Amazon women. None of which are Wonder Woman. So little kid and his host. host his hot sister. They're lying in wait for the tiger. And to ki kill some time. Hot sister is telling him all about their family drama or something. It's hard to really make out what was going on, but something about... sounded like the Amazons attacked their family, their family village, and dragged their father up by horseback, uh, you know, doing that thing where they tie him to the back of a horse and just drag him off. And I guess the little kid and his hot sister were the only ones to be able to escape. 
Um, I don't know if he w- little kid was just too young to remember all of this happening, because I would kind of fucking remember if, say, just a band of women, not even a band of women, just a band of people, even if I was, like, three years old, and they attacked my house and killed my parents, and I had to run off, I would have a little inkling of that. Some small memory. But then they have to be quiet because the Amazon women are on their way because they're hunting for Mr. Hunk guy. That's probably Thor, who's not really Thor. He's Hercules. So fuck you, film. He's Hercules. He's not Thor. I can sense it. And the hot sister is kind of like, I wonder who they are. Dude, you just fucking were telling the story about the Amazonians. How do you not recognize that someone tell you the story? Were you not there? You escaped from the attack by the Amazonians. Were you too young to remember? And someone just told you the story and didn't tell you what they actually look like? Or did some other group attack your village? I don't know, but she doesn't recognize the Amazonians despite just telling a story about how the Amazonians killed her parents and raided her village. Ugh. And then there's the tiger, who's obviously filmed on the soundstage somewhere far, far away from the rest of the people. And he just kind of walks away. And little kid, he misses his chance. He can't kill the tiger. He's got his bow and arrow ready because... So it'll alert them to the Amazonians, and the tiger gets away free. Um, I don't know if everyone's, like, so close that, I mean, I guess the Amazonians can't see, like, the kid and his hot sister. It's understandable. They're hiding. But they're making a lot of fucking noise, these Amazonians, walking while searching for Hercules' Thor. So how did the tiger not hear them and go... Meat, I'm going to pounce on you, and I'm going to eat your fucking face. Even though there's, you know, like at least 20 Amazonians. Tiger don't care. Like, bitch, 20 of you against me. Sounds like, doesn't sound like a fair fight for you. Because I'm great. Horrible Tony Tiger impersonation there. But yeah, Tiger would fucking eat at least one of the Amazonians' face off. The Amazonians come upon a waterfall, and there, Thor, who's really Hercules, is swimming, because he is happy. And they decide, okay, we'll follow him, and then surround him, and we'll capture him. Meanwhile, Thor has gotten out of the little lake that he was swimming in, and Oh no, he's caught by the trap that was set for the tigers. And little kid and his hot sister come thinking, Yay, we caught the tiger. Like, oh, we only caught Thor. And Thor knows them. Because of course he does. He has probably fucked the hot sister. At least twice. I can get the sense. You know, sometimes you get the sense that two people have fucked twice. It is weird. If they've only fucked once, you be like, eh, maybe something there. If they fucked three or more times, like, you sense that they fucked, but you can't sense how often they fucked, how many times. But for some reason, if you see a pair of people and they've only fucked twice, you can tell it. You can tell that they've only fucked twice. I don't know. It is bizarre. But unfortunately, the Amazonians come and they surround them. And say, like, we're bringing you to our queen. And Thor, he tells the kid and his hot sister to run off. And he's like, I am a free man. I am not leaving this forest. You'll have to take me by force. And the Amazonians are like, okay. And they rush at him. And he keeps going backwards and backwards until he falls off the ledge. And luckily, he's caught by black guy. I'm guessing he, it's his black friend. I hate having to, like, say, like, oh, it's the black guy. 
But I'm guessing that this is probably the only black guy in this film. And I don't know what his name is. And really, come on, you've you've probably heard my podcast enough times that I don't bother to learn the characters' names. Unless it's, like, super, super important. So, you know, hot sister, little kid, black guy. Yeah, they all... Actually, now that I think about it, I mean, so far, black guy hasn't been given a name. I don't think little kid or hot sister have been given a name either. I think Thor is the only character that has a name so far. So, black guy... And bite me, I'm going... It's either that or Mandingo. Because if I see him start, like, using his sexual prowess on the Amazonians, he's going with Mandingo. But so far, he's just black guy. Takes... I was going to say Hercules. Because I still say he's Hercules, it's not Thor. But he's blonde, and doesn't have a beard, so... I guess that's closer to Marvel Comics Thor. Not original Norse mythology Thor, who's... A redhead. He's a fucking ginger. You know. And Marvel Comics was like, we can't have a fucking ginger. Be a god. So he takes Thor into his secret hidden cave. That must have like a secret entrance or something. Because that Amazonians come to it and they can't find a way in. They're like, he just disappeared. What happened? How did he do it? So they take the little kid and his hot sister captive and they're slaves now and they have their hands tied behind their heads on sticks and big fucking pieces of log I don't know if I can convey what it looks like but yeah just imagine however you want to imagine prisoners and hot sister and one of the other female slaves they start bitching at each other and I can catch some real, like, women in prison vibes coming on, so I hope so. So I am a fan of women in prison movies. They are fucking hot. So, this is what, women, women in chains, they're chained up. Women, and one of the head gl- gladiator, or Amazonian says they're heading to the arena, because I think they get turned into gladiators. So, women in gladiator roles. Hot. Meanwhile, black guy is trying to take care of Thor and puts him down to rest and, you know, sets him up real nice. And both of them are only wearing loincloths. And I am secure enough in my masculinity to say it's hot. This is fucking hot. I, I'm ready for it to go into, like, the next level. I was expecting, like, Black Eye to give Thor, like, a rub down and take off his clothes and... You know, it's hot. I can't... Two muscular men in loincloths and it looks like about one of them's gonna give the other a massage. It is hot. So, see, I am not sexist. I do not only just talk about, like, how hot the chick scenes are. And I'm not going to talk just about, like, girl on girl and how hot that is. I will talk about how hot man, sweaty man in loincloth on sweaty man in loincloth is. Because that is hot as well. Little kid and his hot sister are taken back to the place wherever the Amazonians live, I guess. And they're split up. Because he's just a kid, so he gets sent to the re-education center or something. While she gets prepared for fighting in the arena of gladiators. They don't say it. that They don't say that, which they should have. Just like that. They should have made it super dramatic. Meanwhile, Black Eye is nursing Thor back to health. And I want to keep calling him Hercules. Thorcules! Thorcules! This is... This is what he's going to be called. Fuck that. Thorcules. No, I don't like that. And he's talking about weapons, uh, Black Guy is, because there was a weapon that Thor got hit with, and it's a special hunting weapon. And the Black Guy calls Thor Master. 
So I don't know. Is this Thor's slave? So I fucking hate you now, Thor, because you have a slave. No, seriously, I I just assumed they didn't know each other, and it was just kind of random, but I guess he knows them, and Thor is his master. What the fuck? Why does Thor have a slave? And I'm not calling him slave. He's still black guy. Black guy helps Thor pop his shoulder back in place, and Thor wants to go save little kid and his hot sister. More likely to save the hot sister. He wants to fuck the third time. Yeah, I'm continuing with that story. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thor and hot sister have fucked twice. And now Thor wants to fuck a third time. Make it a hat trick. But Black Eye tells him, like, you're just too weak. So you stay here. I will catch you some fish. And then we'll be strong. And tomorrow you can be on your way. And Thor's like, I want you to come with me to fight. And then, like, the what? Look on his face of the black guy. And he's like, fight women? Yes, black guy. This is the 60s. Feminism is in full force. You fight a woman if you need to. I think. I don't know. I gotta say, this. so far this film has not been quite as sexist as I thought it would be. I mean, sure... Women have to learn their place, but surprisingly, it hasn't really been brought up that much. Even what women, women's place is. <laughs> you know, right now, all it is is, you know, women's place is do not enslave men. Which, okay. I can get down with that. I think that's a good place for women to know their role. Because uh, I don't think anyone should be enslaving any other person. So, if women knowing their role means that they're not enslaving people, okay, I can get down with that and teach these women to know their place. Haven't heard so far that, you know, they gotta be birthing babies and cooking dinner. If that's the place that these guys think that women should be at, then I'm gonna have to change my mind. So Hot Sister is dressed up in the gladiator clothes which is pretty much just a ugly brown dress. Normally ugly, but she pulls it off. Hot sister is still hot. And they're going over the rules. They put 20... Oh, I forget now. Was it 20 or 21? However many rings, like, basically, like, iron bracelets on her arm. And each time she wins a match, one of them's removed. And if she gets all of them removed, she wins her freedom. Which I think is basically, wasn't that the rules the Romans had with their gladiators? Um, Again, it's fucking Hercules, isn't it? I don't know. Hercules was the Greeks. What was the Romans' variation of Hercules? Um, Maximus. Gladiator. <laughs> that would have been interesting if they made Russell Crowe wear, like, iron bracelets. And they put them all on one arm, too, so... That gives them a real fucking unfair adva- disadvantage. <laughs> like, you know, they gotta swing their sword wearing 20 fucking iron bracelets. They could have at least, like, split it among the two arms. Give a little sense of even evenness. And Hot Sister asks, how many women have won their freedom? And ominously, one of the old ladies says, not one. But I bet you Hot Sister's gonna do it! She's gonna do it! She's gonna win her freedom! Or Thor slash Hercules slash Thor is gonna save her. I'm really hoping that she wins her freedom and wins all her fucking matches and just kicks some ass. Meanwhile, her little brother is at the education camp. Re-education through labor camp, that is. That sounded so much more clever in my mind than it came out. And, but basically, yeah, they have, they're, they're slave labor. 
the little kids are just slave labor. And one of the little girls from the Amazonian side, she starts talking to him and is like, where'd you get your bear cloth loin thing? And he's like, I killed it myself. And she doesn't believe him. Like, this little kid, this little punk, killing a bear by himself. I ain't buying it. She doesn't know. So Hot Sister's in the gladiator locker room, training room. I don't know. There's like this revolving like door type thing with spikes. I don't know what that's about. And some of the women are practicing their whipping skills. And Hot Sister is talking with... I think it might have been the one she was having the argument with earlier. I don't know. These women are kind of interchangeable. But apparently there's one woman there who's so close. The closest anyone's ever been. She's two rings away from winning her freedom. So she just has to kill two more people. Two more of the other women gladiators. And she will be free. But unfortunately, all her victories, she's just a little dirty cheating bitch. My words, not theirs. You know, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking dirty, cheating bitch. Which, of course, you know, it's gladiator combat. There are no rules, so you can't really cheat. So however you win, you win. Now, the head of the gladiator department, she wants to make sure that things are going well. So she calls for a practice bout. And to be fair, she pulls... Names out of a hat, except their colors, and quite bizarre because the first color that's pulled out is white, and everyone has a color band. So somehow, Hot Sister is the one that's called, even though her color band is light blue. I don't know how she got chosen when clearly the it was white. They got chosen, and she has a light blue band. It should not have been her. But luckily for her, she got injured during training, so she's not good for practice. I I say just, you know, like a horse. Horse with a broken leg, you shoot them. Kill her in practice. That's how it would be if I ran things. So the two girls that are chosen for the fight, they fight. And it's a pretty boring fight in my opinion. But one is victorious and knocks the other down. However, even though it is just practice, it's still to the death. And the one that won, or would have won, she can't kill the other one. She can't do it. I don't know why not. Why, like, Oh, I can't kill my fellow lady prisoner. You're going to have to kill them when you go into combat anyhow. And, I don't know, like, at least ask, like, okay, it's practice, but if I kill them, does that still count as one of my victories? And I get to lose one of these bracelets. I, you know, you got to check it out. And then for some reason, they don't allow, like, the match to continue and find out, does the other girl want to take a stab at it and kill? Because I would have been like, I will kill her. Does it count towards my victory? But since the one that won refused to kill, she now will be killed by a firing squad of arrows. And to make it cruel, the firing squad is fellow prisoners. And... Although on the bright side, they tire to the tree facing inward, so she cannot see the arrows coming. Which I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Like, I mean, either way, you've got the anticipation coming, I guess, of not knowing when it's going to happen. But I guess I would rather... <sighs> yeah, this movie's boring me, too. <laughs> I, I think I would rather be shot in the back. I don't want to see those arrows coming towards me. 
so the little girl from earlier, the little Amazonian, she thinks the little brother is so super cool, so she helps him to escape so that he can show her the ways of the jungle. Or the forest. I think she they said forest. It's basically the same. I'm going to go with jungle because jungle just sounds cooler. You know, it's George of the jungle, Tarzan of jungle. You don't hear Tarzan of the forest. And he shows her like, oh yeah, life is so awesome, super cool. You have to go for your own fruit. Woo! No, the fruit doesn't just come to you by slaves. You have to put in the work to grab the fu fruit. And I'm not sure what happens, but they're passed out and they wake up in the secret cave where Thor and his black friend are having a very sexy arm wrestling contest. And now that little brother is awake, Thor gives him some milk. Although there's a monkey, tries to drink the milk. No, bad monkey, bad monkey. Give him back the milk or you're going to get spanked. Yeah, I... Yeah, I went for that joke. I am ashamed of it. Um, but the little Amazonian girl, she's just still passed out. She's not waking up. But little kid tells Thor about how Hot Sister has been captured and is going to be forced to fight as a gladiator. It's not really an arena. It's kind of just a field with some spikes put up to... Well, there's a spike fence, I guess, so people can't, like, get in without a ticket or something. I, I don't know what the whole fence part is. I guess just to separate it. And then there's little spikes in a circle, because that's the little ring where they gotta fight. And the queen's on her throne, and someone brings her her royal cat, so that she may pet her pussy throughout this very, very hot and sexy girl-on-girl -girl action. I know, I know, I'm just very, like, laboring these bad, <laughs> bad, dirty jokes. Um, but the fights begin, and they're triple threats. So it's three women fighting at once. So, I think in this case, if you win, that should count as two. That should count as two rings, because you have to kill two women. Or, you know, only one ring if you kill the one woman and the woman you killed had killed the other one. Because in that case, you only killed one woman, so even though you win, you just get the one ring. But I think if you kill the other two women, that should count as two rings, right? It would, in my book, if I were <laughs> in charge of these battles, if you kill two women in one match, it counts as her twice and we get a bunch of fights which aren't that exciting you know it's girl on girl on girl action and it's just not that exciting maybe if they if it was lingerie roman gladiator combat you know like i'm not a huge mma fan but lingerie fighting combat championship whatever the fuck it's called that's mma but women in lingerie. Now that is exciting. You know, since these are all triple threats, which means two women are dying in each match, do they just have, like, a huge surplus of women? Is this why they're constantly, like, having to find new slave women? Um, cause especially if no one earns their freedom. You're just gonna be, like, and an exponential rate of killing off your entire gladiator series. And sometimes all three women get killed. And apparently, in this final match, the final two women, because they're besties, can't bring themselves to kill each other, so they're forced to kill themselves. Which, at that point, like, I'd be like, oh... I gotta kill myself. You know what? Someone's dying. I'm taking her out. And getting one of these rings off. Fuck it. Or maybe, I mean... Killing yourself is probably preferable to keep fighting in these matches. That at one point you will probably die. Since you have to win 
since you have to be in at least 21 matches to win your freedom, those odds are not that good. So the younger brother makes it back to his village, and everyone's all happy to see him. Hooray! Yay! And he tells them all about, you know, the evil women. So Thor, he's made his mission. He's going to go and take care of them and, you know, make them realize what a woman's role in life is, I think. I don't know. (laughs) He doesn't say that, but the black guy, his black friend, possibly black slave, is trying to get out of it. Like, no, he doesn't want to go. He's like, no, master, I don't want to go. But Thor's like, this is important. This is for justice. So off they go. And they find a bunch of these Amazonians. And they've got another black guy. So there's two black guys in this film. At least for, like, 30 seconds. Because they tie him up. They're about to shoot arrows at him. But since he's a guy, he's not going to get the courtesy that the girl did. And he's got to face the arrows. Straight on. But Thor, he jumps in the way, and he's like, what has this man done to you? And they're like, he was the queen's husband, and she got tired of him. Which, you know, he was the sex slave, I'm guessing. He was the sex slave, and he can't get it up anymore. So queen's got to get rid of him. But Thor, he's trying to manhandle the Amazonians, and he tells the other black guy to run. And he runs, but... Remember, there's like 20 Amazonians with arrows. So, yeah, Thor can only handle one woman at a time. What kind of stud is he, really? I mean, only one woman at a time? Come on, Thor. You've got to be able to take on three of them. Shove them around with your mighty penis. But so the other archers, they shoot their arrows and kill the black guy. So we're back down to just only one black guy in this film. Now Thor goes running off and hides in the cave, which I think is the cave where the Amazonians live, and the large parade of Amazonian warriors, they don't see him, so they go marching by, and they're all like, and it's something like a Monty Python skit, really. Like how in Life of Brian, anytime like the Roman soldiers were like all gathered in mass, and you just hear the and like rabble rabble sound, so... This must be the comedy part of the film. Because then we go to the black guy, Thor's black friend slash slave. And the music just gets all wacky and whimsical. And he's running. He's like, oh, no. And the Amazonians find him and capture him. And they put him on a... They take him to somewhere. Some sort of stage or something. They put him on a pedestal that revolves around. Meanwhile, the queen, who's behind a wall is asking him to flex and show off his muscles, which he does because, you know, he knows that he probably will get killed if he doesn't listen to this voice. After he does lots of flexing, the queen is satisfied that this guy is a stud. So the wall uh, moves, and it's her bedroom and her bed, and she tells him that she's chosen, chosen him as her husband, which means, yeah, I want some hot fucking big black cock right now. And Black Friend's just like, me? Because he's stupid. You know, this film nearly doesn't have as much sexism as I was expecting. But it sure has its good old-fashioned racism. Now, Thor comes upon the guys that are enslaved. And they're working hard at breaking rocks or something. I've never fully understood, like, What's the breaking of rocks into, like, smaller rocks? I mean, I guess you can use the smaller rocks to throw at people. Use them for your slingshots. I don't know, but Thor is confused of why do these men not just break free? Because apparently, like, there are such pussies that Amazonians haven't even set someone to watch over the slaves. They're just slaving away on their own. They're on the honor system. Like, you be good slaves and do your job. And Thor tells them, but you're stronger than women. So there's that good old-fashioned sexism I was waiting for. But the guys are like, but they've got weapons and we haven't eaten. And blah, 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 blah. we would die if we tried to break out. Pussies. So in the queen's quarters, she's feeding Thor's black friend, Grapes. 
which is weird. I don't know if she quite knows how this works. Um, she's lording over him, so shouldn't he be forced to feed her grapes? Because, you know, even though he's the king, the Amazonian's like a matriarchy, so he would be subservient to her. So, yeah, he should be feeding her grapes. But, I don't know, maybe she gets to runs when she eats grapes. So, in that case, like, yeah, she doesn't want to eat grapes, because... That would kind of kill the mood for sexy sex time. But then Thor comes in, and she's mad, like, ooh, who's this guy? And Black Friend's like, oh, this is my master, and everything will be okay. And she just kind of gives him the death stare. Um, I'd be pretty pissed off if, like, oh, my husband's a slave? Fuck you, he deserves freedom. But Thor's like, you don't understand, she's gonna kill you! And Black Friend, because he's a dumb black guy. Because this film is like, just loves its racism. Um, you know, although I'm not quite sure with the Queen, I think she might be black. Maybe Mulatto. I can't quite tell. The picture quality on this film is not the greatest. So Thor's decided, you know... He's going to save his black friend, even though his black friend is too stupid to realize that he's in danger. So he punches his black friend to knock him out. And the queen calls for her guards. And her guards are all guys. And I don't get that. Because, I mean, they're Amazonians. Like, like, why are you letting these guys, you know, kind of the freedom of being guards? Like, what if they decide, hey, we're all guards. We're all guys. We're going to fucking take down the queen. Shouldn't the Amazonian women be guards and these guys just, you know, castrated eunuchs serve to feed the Amazonians grapes? I don't think this Amazonian queen quite knows how to be an Amazonian queen. They should put me in charge. I'll be the Yas queen. Yeah, I know that's probably not really the way you pronounce it and pull it off. I'm not very good at it. I'm not queen material either. You know, it's a good thing I don't record these anymore, like, just straight through while watching it. Or else you would have heard me, like, slap my forehead very, very hard right then. So, the guards have, like, are around Thor in a circle. A little fucking circle jerk, I guess. Um, and Black Friend happens to wake up right at that moment. And he takes, like, that gong thing that you hit the gong with, the gong stick, I don't know, is there, there must be an official term for that, but I don't know what it is, and he's knocking out the guards one by one as they go in a circle, just because I guess that's how they just, yeah, it's not like he moves, like, Black Friend is just standing there, and, like, the circle goes around, comes the guard, boom, knock them out, then the next guard moves, boom, like, just in order, until, oops! Because the tussle moved a little too much, and Thor got in the way of the gong. And if that isn't bad enough, the queen says, Good job, you've knocked them out clean. And Black Friend's like, But I didn't mean to knock them out. And she's like, Well, then who did you mean to knock out? Um, I don't know, Queenie, were you not watching him, like, knock out five guards? Like, did you think she, he was knocking them out so that he could get a clean shot at Thor? Like, it's obvious the next shot was meant for another guard. Ah, oh, jeez. And, you know, again, Black Friend, you know, explains that Thor is his friend. Although sometimes it's he's the Black Friend's master. I, I still don't know. I don't know the relationship. Is Black Friend just Thor's friend, or is he Thor's slave? I don't know. It hurts me to try to think of that, but Queen pretty much says, you know, off with his head. She demands he be taken away, and he's going to be put to death. And Black Friend realizes, oh no, Thor was right. She is evil. So, no one's seen Thor for a while. So... <clears throat> The little brother and the old man and the little Amazonian girl that ran off with them. They've 
I think they're making some sort of plan. I don't know. I kind of got distracted, and I don't care about them. But I guess they'll probably save Thor. Fucking an old man and little kids. Meanwhile, over in the gladiator complex place, Hot Sister is kind of just wistful, like, oh no, I'm going to have to fight and possibly die and blah blah. But the head of the gladiators comes to talk to her because she recognizes the tattoo on Hot Sister's shoulder. And it's the sign of the royal family of that country that they overtook long ago. And she knows that she's the queen and her little brother is the rightful king. Or, what? No, they... I don't know if you <laughs> managed to hear that, like, fucking car drove by with, like, some loud music blaring. I don't know if that got picked up. If it did, I apologize. If it didn't, I apologize for this long rant about it. <laughs> so, yeah, they couldn't, they can't be king and queen, right? Only one of them would be king, and the other would be princess, duchess. I don't know. I don't quite know how royal titles work. But, you know, the head of the gladiator, she's giving a long speech of how, you know, she just wants a nice home life and, you know, a man that's stronger than her and blah, blah, blah. And that's why they have to overthrow the queen. But one of the other gladi gladiators, she overhears it. It's the one that's like two victories away from freedom. So I'm guessing she's going to go to the queen with this information of the uprising and use that to barter her way into freedom. Maybe be the queen's right-hand woman. And the head of the gladiators is already chained up. I don't know. I don't know if we missed, like, a reel of footage or something. It just suddenly jumped, like, she was talking about overthrowing, then straight into her being chained up. And so... I guess I'll call her Evil Woman. I, I don't really have a name for her. The one that overheard has told the queen, you know, of all the plans and how Hot Sister is, like, the queen of queens of that other country. And I don't know. I can't follow this dialogue. It's painful. But, um... If, apparently, if this girl now wins her last two and gets victory, she will have the newly opened position of Commander General. Which seems like kind of a dumb title. Like, either your general or the commander. I don't know, is there really, like, a Commander General in the army? There might be, and I might just be looking like an idiot here. Which is all cool. I'm, I'm an idiot, so I don't mind looking like an idiot. Um, but yeah, like, she still has to, like, win her freedom, though? <laughs> like, the queen's, like, planning on giving her, like, this position. And there's only two victories left anyhow. So why not just slide it off? Like, ah, you know what? Close enough. You've proven your worth. You're free. You're my commander general. Man, the queen's kind of a bitch. It's forcing this lady to still have to fight the last two fights and you know what if she loses one of them or if she gets killed then who's going to be your commander general you didn't think this out queen did you so now the commander or i guess she's the former commander general is placed on the torture rack and stretched and bdsm and me says it's hot oh yeah it's been a while since i've done the oh yeah right you all missed it. And so... What happened? Oh yeah, she's being tortured. But she refuses to give up who's like her co-conspirators in this plan to overthrow the queen. Which if I were me... I would just start naming names of people I hated. Because I don't think the queen's going to look into it too far. She's like, oh, she named you as co-conspirator? You're dead too. Especially name that bitch that, like, sold you out. Like, hey, how do you think she found out about it? She just doesn't want to go through with it, and so she's selling me out to try to save her own hide. 
But no, she refuses to give up any names. And so she dies. So Thor and the Black Friend are brought before the Queen. And blah, 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 speeches and stuff. And she talks about how women are superior to men. And you know what? Some of her points are actually pretty solid, I think. You know, how they can withstand childbirth and they can withstand more physical pain and things like that. I'm kind of on her side except for the whole enslaving people and trying to just wipe out an entire gender. That, you know, I'm a little iffy about, but she does have some good points. And, you know, she also points out that Thor... He was captured by force. And so she's going to give him the chance if he can break free by force. Which, yeah, I mean, if your argument is that men are stronger, women should not be able to take him down. And granted, there was like... Tw Actually, he wasn't even taken down by the women. He was taken down by Black Friend. So, yeah, I guess, you know, you got an iffy argument there, too, on whether or not how strong women are to take, take down Thor. And I must have blinked and missed something, but somehow Black Friend is now in a different jail cell. Kind of. Maybe something. Part of the cave. I don't know. But the little kid and his Amazonian friend and the old guy find him and somehow free him. And I don't know. Black Friend is free. Along with the wacky combined efforts of the other people. Um, then over in the gladiator pit of something where they hold their combat, Thor is brought out and they read the proclamation that it's been said that if one man can defeat the combined might of 101 women, then the matriarchy will end. Which seems very arbitrary, in my opinion. Like, you know, it, it's, I don't even know if it's like some sort of proclamation down from the goddess, because you could just be like, ah, eh, yeah, fuck no, we're not ending it. And I think it's also unfair that's 101 women, because if it was 100 women, you know, he would win easily. That extra woman, oh boy, it's going to be tough, you know, I, I was going to kind of jump to a 101 Dalmatians, 101 Bitches joke, but that would be extremely offensive. So I will not go there. I will not make that joke. Um, so I don't know if he has to fight them all at once or one at a time, or he's on some sort of platform and there looks like to be like a bucket pool near him. So I don't know, maybe it's Olympic Games and he has to win all the games by himself. Let's see. And out come the 101 women. And if I was Thor, I'd be a dick and be like, hey, specifically says 101 women, I want to count. I want to head count and make sure that there's only 101 women, not 102. Because that would be unfair. And then they proclaim that at the same time as this is going to go on, there's going to be the gladiator combat between the hot sister and the evil woman who is two victories away from her freedom. Which, what kind of bullshit is this? How am I supposed to focus? Um, you know, there's two events going on at once. What the fuck? Are we going to get picture in picture here? Um, what? We're just going to go back and forth. How am I supposed to concentrate? I, I want to watch both competitions. You know, this, so it is like the Olympics. There's all this shit going on at once. Except these are, like, side by side. So the spectators, like, how are they going to decide? What do I watch? Do I watch the two gladiator women? Or do I watch Thor get killed by 101 women? Or well, obviously the 101 women thing, because that's going to be such a massive ass-kicking. And also it's more important because, you know, if Thor wins, end the matriarchy. So there's bigger stakes involved there. And the games begin. It's a tug-of-war. Or, I was going to call him Hercules. You know, I've 
went a good long while without calling him Hercules. I stuck with the Thor, but damn it, he's basically Hercules in this film. So it's a tug of war. Now I was about to call him whore. Sure, we'll go with it. Thor versus the 101 women. And it's a battle, and he's up on the ledge, so... And that little circle pool is a pit of fire. So if he loses, death by fire. If the fall doesn't kill him first, because it's a pretty high fall. If he lands on his head and breaks his neck, that would probably be, like, the best <laughs> he could hope for right now. It's a quick death before, instead of being burned to death. If he could die. Ideally, if you die from a heart attack while you're falling. So you don't even feel, like, the thud of hitting the ground. Let alone being burned alive. And while that's going on, the gladiator warrior fight between the two women is also going on simultaneously. Right next to each other. And I feel bad for any spectator watching because how do you know which one to watch because both are quite frankly fucking boring <laughs> neither one's entertaining i guess the thor one's a little more entertaining because he's gonna fall to his death um my cat's doing this weird purring i don't know why he only does this while i'm recording my podcast No, of course now he stops. It's weird purring that sounds kind of like a bird. But he doesn't do it any other time. Solely when I'm doing this podcast. He's doing it to fuck with me. I'm convinced of it. Because he is a cat. And that's what cats love to do. Is just fuck with people. He just kind of purred at me as if he was saying yes. Yes we do. So meanwhile, while all this action and excitement's going on, the scrappy group of black friend and old guy and little kid and the Amazonian girl, we're just going to call them scrappy group because I don't want to have to repeat all four of their names each time. They find the prison of all the guy slaves and they go to free them. And I'm... Damn it, cat! That is so fucking distracting. Or is it that the movie's so boring I'd rather listen to my cat purr? A little of column A, a little of column B. So, they free the slaves, or are trying to free them. And I hope they get out, because they'll help uh, even the odds with Hercules in this tug-of-war challenge. Although I guess that would be cheating, because the rules did specify it had to be one man versus 101 women. The battle's still raging on, and Hot Sister's about to win, and she's got her blade at the throat of Evil Girl, but then Evil Girl's all like, Please don't do it! Spare my life and I'll talk to the queen and she'll spare yours! And of course, since Hot Sister is a dumb blonde, she falls for it. And so they start fighting back and forth, and meanwhile, Thor who isn't Hercules, because he's actually kind of smart. Maybe. <laughs> um, but he actually kind of outsmarts them, because there's the big fire pit. He manages to keep moving the rope back and forth over the fire pit, which causes, eventually, the rope to catch fire, breaking, and when it breaks, the 101 women fall backwards. Good thinking there, Thor. Because technically, you have won. I don't think this was exactly the way they meant it. It wasn't the spirit of the rules, but it was the letter of the rules. And you won. So, kudos, Thor. You didn't have to outmuscle 101 women. You just had to outsmart them. And women are dumb. Or so the film's trying to tell me. Not my personal belief. So Thor jumps down, and he knocks over the fire pit to cause fire to pass a little tiny bit. I was expecting, like, the whole thing to catch fire, but no. Enough to scare off the 101 women. And this distraction gives Hot Sister a chance to jump off from the circle pit where they're fighting. And 
the Amazonians start chasing them and the men slave who are now freed come out of the caves and lots of fighting and people running around and I don't know what the fuck's going on. At some point, Hot Sister must have been stabbed or something because she starts, she's like dying, but with her dying breath, she throws a spear that kills the queen. And the old man's like talking to her and said, you can't die, you can't die. And she's like, I wasn't fighting for me. My brother is going to take the throne and restore power back to men. Ah, you know, I wasn't paying attention during the credits, but I'm willing to bet that this film was written by a dude. Just, uh, just throwing that out there. I <laughs> just, like, yeah. So that's what women do. They have to die to make sure men have power. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. What do you expect from an Italian film from, like, the 60s? Good old-fashioned racism, good old-fashioned sexism, and a very studly man in a loincloth. I don't know what that was about, but I think that was, like, the majority of Italian films. It was that and Clint Eastwood as a cowboy. And we jump to an indeterminate amount of time later, and the little brother is sitting on the throne, and he is king, and... Some guy has, like, a cheetah head on top of his head. Yeah, he's got, like, one of those robes that's really just a cheetah. <laughs> the fur of a cheetah on him. And they're all happy and laughing, and... Hot Sister is alive, and she shoots an arrow. Except, maybe she's not alive. Because it kind of looks like, you know... We don't see her feet, but she's kind of floating, and all you see behind her are the sky and clouds. Maybe she's an angel. That's that's how I'm interpreting this film. This is how I'm interpreting the end of the film, is she's dead, she's an angel. Um, then again, I interpret just about pretty much every film as being one of the main characters is dead for the entire film, and it's a fantasy living out through their final moments. And that's the end of that. Yeah, Thor and the Amazon women. Answering the age-old question, is it possible for there to be a Thor film worse than The Dark World? And the answer is yes. Um, then again, technically, it's not Thor, Thor. It's just some guy named Thor. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't agree with the Queen of the Amazons methods. But I do subscribe to some of her ideology. You know, maybe it's time for men to take a backseat and let women run things for a while. See how it goes. I think it's worth an experiment. I think it's worth... I think it's worth giving a shot. And as usual, I have no way to end these things. So velvetal at hotmail.com. If you want to send me an email telling me how much you loved or hated this episode or hate the show in general or give recommendations for future episodes. It's all good. Just please. I'm lonely and all I ever get is spam mail. So someone just tell me that they feel one way or another. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button as every other video that I watch on YouTube tells me to do. <laughs> Click like and hit the subscribe button. and be sure That way you can be sure to catch it every time there's a new episode uploaded. And crap like that. And let my family save, help your family save money. Um, that's from the awful Save with Conrad, like, network of wrestling podcasts. Like, 0.02% of you listening will get that. But, yeah, next time, I will be back 
to take the pain of watching a film so you don't have to. 